Hello my friends, it seems like the big Russian attack starts to fail. Almost every day we go to the footages of the new and new explosions of the Russian columns, for example this one happened near to Bahmut. That huge explosion might be caused by the ammunition detonation inside the tank. Plus, there are more and more videos coming from the front lines showing the Russian infantry and how they struggle under the fire of Ukrainian artillery and drones. Yeah, this video I definitely cannot publish on YouTube. Still, I wouldn't say that Russia is on their big assault, however, they have some sort of the new vectors. For example, here directly to Kupensk, they want to retake the city in the Kharkiv region that was liberated by Ukrainian forces a long time ago. They also intensified the fire near to Krimina before Ukraine got the counterattack over there. They obviously got some sort of a small success near to Bakhmut and they also failed in Vuhledar. Vuhledar is on the south part of the front lines. So Vuhledar no go. As for the Donetsk direction, partially they got some sort of the success, so maybe plus minus for the Russian army, they still cannot penetrate the main defense line that Ukraine was able to build. And still, based on the information we got and based on the chart, I'll just switch on the Russian positions, they concentrate lots of the forces on the eastern side, so the main assault will be on the eastern side of Ukraine, but still Russia may attack from other places. By the way, my friends, now I'll tell you about the resource which helps me to get the up-to-date information about the situation in Ukraine. We are now on a ground news website. I found about this platform around one month ago and now I'm really satisfied with the information I am able to get from here. This media resource was found by the ex-NASA engineer and it covers the topics all around the world. Plus, it has the separate the Ukrainian war-related page and here you may find all of the news about this particular topic. And here here I was able to find the topic that I crucially need for this video. So if I just click on it, I'll get all of the related information. This news, Ukraine warns the new Russian offensive is imminent as troops mass on border. Very similar title and looks the same with one year ago. The reality is that it could be true. And here we have the bias distribution, left, right and central. You can see that many of the media resources covered it mostly equally. And if you scroll a little bit down, you can see the information is based on the facts. It's based on the Russia that is collected the forces near to Ukrainian border and it's also based on the information coming from the officials. And on the left part you can see all of the relations to the media resources about this particular topic. So some of them saying about the 500,000 soldiers that Russia is able to take for the next offensive action. But some of the articles say about the 300,000. Today we're gonna say about the particular number in this video. And some of the many resources even say that the new attack may happen one year after the previous one exactly on the 24th of the February but 2023. If you tend to deviate to left or right you can be biased and for that they have the blind spots. If you click on that you may also find the articles that you might have missed. By the way it's not just the website they also have the applications for your mobile device. I think it's the best resource that not just covers the news around the world but distributes them to you based on political spectrum. And for sure I'll continue to use the ground news for my videos because the way they can strike and deliver the information for the user is the best out there. So if you are looking for the better way to stay informed about the current events that are happening around the world and around the Ukrainian topic, you may go to my personal link in the video description below and sign up for the ground news for free or subscribe to get the full access without no limits. My friends, please support the Ground News team. They are awesome in reviewing and distributing the news. For me, I use it for my topic, Ukrainian war. Now let's go to Bahmut and see the situation over there. Russia claimed that they took the Krasnohara, which is on the northern part from the Bahmut. So still far away from the city itself. And I'm very happy that Russia is not moving to the north and they are unable to capture Chasif Yar and Ivanovske. But still, they present the great threat to Bakhmut from the eastern side and also from the north direction, from the south. If they cut supply line, it's better to get out from Bakhmut for Ukrainian forces. And now I contacted my friend who is in Bakhmut and they are moving from this part of the city. I don't know if all of the forces are moving or not, but Russia entered 
enter the residential area of the city and now moving to the river and i guess this month they will try to capture at least the part of the bahmut and in that case a russian leader may say that they got some sort of the success after one year of the war and unfortunately i think that it may continue as soon as russian president keeps his power in russia and time lapse you can see that russia takes some of the ground each day but definitely they lost quite a lot of forces according to the british intelligence they lost around 6400 people during the last week and if we scroll back for one week it's like that so they lost more than 6000 soldiers to get some of the fields and maybe a couple of the villages over here so it's total nonsense about the south my friends Wuhledar, russia recognized their failure not officially but some of the media resources in russia and they've lost 155th marine brigade over there but at the same time putin in his short interview said that they are fighting they continue to fight our marines from pacific fleet they do the fantastic job uh, really as for ukraine they did a fantastic job just eliminating themselves over there so i'll tell you what happened there firstly russia took pavlovka it was around two months ago and they took it with the help of the marines but it happened after they wasted around 500 mobilized soldiers so they sent them to pavlovka they faced with the ukrainian resistance they went back and the russian forces on the second defense line they just opened the friendly fire towards the retreating russian soldiers because they thought that those were ukrainians who moved back so russia lost around 500 soldiers over there in their failed attempt and in their successful attempt they lost around 300 soldiers so totally 800 just for pavlovka and for Wuledar, it's been counted around 700 soldiers that they lost in unsuccessful attempts to get it under control. Why is it happening like that? Because Ukraine got uh, strong defense lines over there and also we were able to mine all of the fields around and those are the open fields. Russia cannot jump over them. That is why they have to go on the straight attacks and they cannot use the aviation over there as well because Ukraine put the air defense systems very close to Wuhledar. Ukrainian forces shut down many of the Russian attack helicopters and attack airplanes in that area and for Russia Wuhledar is kind of the big pain in the ass because Wuhledar may be used to attack the railway line that goes not far away and Russia needs that railway to send supplies from Crimea and to Crimea also to all of the southern part of the front lines so they wanted to get started their major attack the big one that we were talking about from this direction so they thought that they found the big spot in Ukrainian defense and simply sent their forces across their minefields and were totally demolished after that they also sent the demining equipment some sort of the tanks that may fire the special shells to destroy the mines ahead but that equipment was also demolished by ukrainian artillery so they've sent those vehicles and that is what uh, remained after some of the tanks also to back up those vehicles but they lost all of the tanks together with the special equipment that russia is in lack of you may say that there is no snow it's not the current video actually my friends uh, there is the snow you can spot it and here you can see some snow left but it's recently very sunny weather and on the south if temperature rises a bit snow just melts so russian side wanted to use this frozen temperature to move their vehicles and try to attack wuhledar but unsuccessfully and it should have been the beginning of their massive attack but for now it's failed I also concerned a bit about Belarus. Russia had already used that direction for their attack one year ago. And today the self-proclaimed president of Belarus spoke with his colleagues from the same military alliance like Russia, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, Armenia and Kazakhstan. So they created the same bloc. He said that they should choose the side of this war. And that means that he himself had already made his choice 
and Belarus unfortunately supports Russia and in that case after that interview I think that there is the chance that Belarusia or it's better to say yeah Belarus may join this conflict on the Russian side and this might happen very soon so why Lukashenko is following the Putin's ideas and plays on his side basically now he has nothing to lose because he already helped Russia to start the intervention one year ago. So he personally shares the responsibility and he will be put under trial after the war is over. Still he are afraid for his personal safety and really there are not many choices for Lukashenko personally. If he joins the war with his army, there will be riots in Belarus for sure. Belarus is not Russia. People will not take it as granted. On the other hand, Putin can easily get rid of Lukashenko and put his own people in charge of Belarus and start intervention. So after all, I think that there is the great chance that Belarus joins this big attack that promised by Russia. But still, even with Belarus forces, it will not not be successful. This time Ukraine is ready for the attack from Belarus or any kind of other direction since April months we were building the huge defense lines and our forces eliminated all of the connections with Belarusian territory. So if they would start that offensive mission they would have to go across the forests, woods and swamps. Even during the Second World War, nor Hitler, neither Stalin were planning their operations across the Ukrainian-Belarusian border, because it's simply impossible to conduct it with the tanks. And with the Russian successful missions uh, near to Vuhledar, that they lost the entire brigade, it's basically nonsense to perform at the more complex places as the north side of Ukraine. The terrain there is very difficult. And let's go again to the ground news. I like this topic, Ukraine will get the long-range missiles from the United Kingdom and that will allow us to demolish the supply lines of the Russian forces far away from the front lines. And we are speaking about possible 400 km range missiles that could be launched from the jets. And here if you just click you may have the access to the original resource with everything that's stated so 350 miles. That's the very long range and if we cut supplies for Russians they will never start the big attack on Ukraine once again. They still struggle with the forces that they have and without proper supplies even the million army will fail this war. Tomorrow again there will be a Ramstein meeting between the ministers of defense of many countries who support Ukraine and we have some sort of the leaks that they will speak also about supplying Ukraine with the fighter jets. And that could be also the game changer in this war. I personally consider that without the aviation we cannot win this war. We have some sort of the Suhois and mix, but those are very old and we are in lack of the units. We are also in lack of the bombs and rockets that those Soviet made airplanes may carry. So we need western made airplanes that may carry western made ammunition. So we're gonna see what they will reveal on 14th of February. As for now we have a great support in armored vehicles, for example those Bradleys are already in Germany and soon will go to fight in Ukraine. Also our guys are now on a training in Germany for Leopard 2 tanks. And Putin now is really on a rush to use this time window for his big attack before Ukraine got the weaponry. And because they are in a rush they make some terrible mistakes as in Wuhledar. And the NATO Secretary Stoltenberg today in his conference said that Western allies should support Ukraine more and as fast as possible to minimize this window for Putin. Also he said that the NATO countries may provide Ukraine with modern sophisticated jets. At the same time it doesn't count that NATO takes part in this conflict. And yes, even Russia got their weaponry from Iran, it's been confirmed that they got 18 of the Mujahid 6 heavy drones to their army. Iran basically delivers the parts of the drones to Russia, Russia put everything together and called the drones Russian made and Iran used the ships to deliver those and also Iran Air, the government airline. And while I'm recording this video we got the information that in Russia there is one more significant 
explosion on a gas pipeline that connects Russian gas with the European users. I think it's the fourth explosion of the gas pipeline on the Russian territory during the year. We got the news from France, Canada and United States. They asked their citizens to leave the Belarusian territory as soon as possible. It reminds me the situation last year that many countries called their citizens to leave the Ukrainian territory and some of the embassies evacuated from Kyiv. So I may come out with conclusion that something is going to happen including Belarus and probably Belarus may start also their assault on Ukraine very soon but it will be a great failure for their country. My friends, now press the like to this video and also I highly recommend you again to subscribe for the ground news. The link is in the video description just below. Awesome resource and for sure I'm gonna use it for my future videos. Ground news, you're awesome. I wish you all my friends a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.